Hello and welcome to the video. Before I start telling the story, I need to actually explain I'm going to have to pop up at certain points because whilst editing, it's quite clear that certain bits will not make sense without a bit of explanation. So I either do a voiceover, but I'm already talking, or I do a little snippet beforehand just saying, in this next clip, you're about to see X. <laughs> because uh, it's, it's quite funny watching it back now. It really wasn't funny at the time. The story you're about to watch is horrendous. Uh, I'm gonna not say too much more because I don't wanna ruin the story. It's really important to watch. If you are considering surgery abroad, you do need to watch this. There is nothing else like this online. And that's why I've documented it in the first place. So it's really, really important to watch this and watch it through. There's a lot to learn, a lot to take from these videos. Uh, <laughs> so I'm gonna leave it there. This is part one of the surgery revision starting now. <laughs> Shit. We're here. Right Round two. <laughs> I'm not actually nervous this time. I could not be more ready, physically and mentally. There's nothing more I can do to prep for this, except it out a while ago. I don't know, it seemed like the informa there wasn't much information. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of things I was confused about. Because mm. it just wasn't, it wasn't really made clear. Mm, I in terms of like, aftercare and other information, mm. wasn't really made very clear. So we are going downstairs. Oh. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> This definitely my room? Um, I will ask, but they told me they are 220, but I think they just didn't make the bed. Let me ask. Either it's just down on floor number two that they're better rooms, or they're just generally better rooms. But this is definitely a better room than last time. I feel a lot fancy. Maybe I've actually upgraded a little bit. That's been two years. Let's see what happens. Okay, so we've changed rooms. <laughs> and that was someone else's room I was like, is this my room? Because the bed's not been made and I don't want to sleep in someone else's hospital bed. Worse than a normal bed because it's probably not as clean. <laughs> so we've changed. Fresh. This room's actually a lot more like, is it well, they've upgraded the rooms. Oh, it's just it's on a different floor. But the prospects of staying in this room for another day, I'm like, oh, it's a pretty nice room to be in. Same as the hotel, that's why I'm changing the hotel. When it's a nicer room, nicer decor, and you're gonna stay in there for a lot more hours, it's not as bad. The more plain and miserable it is, the less hours you can you can stay there mentally, because it'll just start to really feel like it's closed in on you. This is a pretty nice room. Right. And that's the TV, apparently. Get the camera set up for any action later on the last time. The only issue is this current camera shuts off after about 15 minutes it overheats, which could uh, I mean the video is not fully captured which happened last time but obviously I'm not doing such a thorough consultation this time because I already spoke to him yesterday so hopefully we'll get everything in that we need so I'll keep you posted. 85. 85. Uh, and how about your weight? Uh, 122 kilos. You did make it to So if you like, she can open it from here, but she said that is in the place that where you bend. So if you like, if that's okay, she can open it from here too. Well, so then it'll stop here, and then when I'm, if I'm bending my arm, it won't affect it. Mm. Or then I cover some particular areas. That's as steady as that. So she's going to open it from there. Yeah, but just to be the most Yeah. And make a fist, please. Fucker. He's fucked that there. Wow, that's bad that hurting today. Wasn't bad last time. She went in very far down. I wish I had it in there. Bastard. It's a comfy. I'm sorry. 
Yeah, it's just, it, because obviously there's a lot of people coming, mm -hmm. getting surgery abroad, so it's just trying to. Yeah. Trying to, well, I just want to see what you're doing first. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so we're now going to cut up and over here and then round back. So I don't know how I'm going to lie down. <laughs> I'm not very confident. But he said it was not as bad last time. So the revision is not supposed to be as bad. <laughs> yeah, we could we couldn't video the consultation because he he, he wasn't um, happy with the video, so that's why I'm I'm not to do this bit. Well, this is a bit hanging. <laughs> I'm in intensive care because my oxygen levels were low. And they said it could just be the, the anaesthetic, but we don't know. Um, they were really low. I fucking knew about it when I care about the anaesthetic. I've never done that before. But literally, like, you had to strap me to the bed because my whole body was contracted. So it's like, does that mean you gave me too much? I, I, I don't actually know. But definitely there was something wrong <laughs> because I've never been like that. I've not been anaesthetic before. So I'm just hooked up. Hooked up to everything. And they said, they don't know how long they've got to keep me on here. It could be all night. I might go back to the room. We don't know. Um, but I'm just sitting and twiddling my thumbs because he took a phone back off me in about 10 minutes time. Because you can't have a phone to put the nurse has got her phone. But the, one of the worst things was like, normally speaking, the turn his ward. And I've got a really bad dry mouth. And try to communicate. Um, and none of them speak English at all. So I was like, okay, what's going on? Who um, 
who could tell what's going on, where the phone, I need, I need to tell people at home. Like, there's no, I'm on my own, so I can't. There's people like, who are waiting for a message to, to know I'm okay. And it's been like, what, 10 hours <laughs> since I've got my phone this morning. Um, so I need, to, I need to let people know I'm okay. And then it took me hours to get the phone brought up, and then they're going to take it back, yeah? So that's quite scary. It's quite, yeah, damn. It's quite a scary thing when I don't really know what's going on. I don't know how long I'm going to stay here. Like, I'm breathing fine now, but at first I really, really struggled to breathe. Um, but it felt like one of my allergies kick up and all, and all the airway closes up. Um, so it, that, that it, uh, it felt like when my airway closed up and, I, and it was tight in here, I was going, I need that histamine, I need that histamine. I've had another allergic reaction, which is what I think potentially has happened as well. Potentially I'm allergic to one of the medications, we don't know. Um, but that's what it felt like. And I, I listen, well, I feel my body is a whole, like, all water is tentative, like it does when I get an allergy for it. Because all my hands and everything went straight away. But well, they shouldn't really be doing that, as far as I know, from an operation. <laughs> because of that, they've stuck me in here. I'm breathing absolutely fine. <laughs> I'm fucking sat in intensive care, just in case. Which is in a good situation, but I don't really want to be in here. Um, it's not pleasant. Can't speak to everyone, can't do anything. Just looking at the ceiling. Um, look, the, I'm a li- in a little bit of discomfort, but I take any pain. It's managed. Um, but I've actually obviously lying on where the incisions are. So I can imagine it's going to be quite painful as the days go on and I get out of this hospital back to old time. There's my update. <laughs> um, it's not, not as smooth as last time. But when, why, why would it? Everything has been a fuck up from last time. And I'm on my own. It's a test, live test. Because um, this is what a lot of people will go through. Complications can happen. And when you're on your own, it's a lot worse. A lot worse. So no matter how much you prepare, I, I could really do with someone who's sat next to me right now. Cap of where we're up to at this point. I've gone in for the operation. I didn't feel right. I felt those complications. The whole thing just felt very uncomfortable. I was on my own. And then I've come out and was unable to breathe. And... I literally got to the point I was about to die because I'd had general anaesthetic, which paralyzes everything, which is why they put the tube down the throat. They pulled the tube out and I could not breathe and I couldn't open my eyes. Were they still taped shut? We don't know. All I know is the scene around me was very panicky and I started fitting on the bed and they strapped me to the bed because I was going to die. Uh, I couldn't breathe. So I know they gave me some more injections at a point and they started giving me oxygen at a point and then blacked out again. And I remember then being wheeled into the ICU. Sat in the ICU for five hours, I think it was, just literally looking at the ceiling. It was horrendous. Finally got them to bring my phone. I think it was two hours in. So I could actually tell people I wasn't, I was alive because it had been like 10 hours at that point that I hadn't spoke to anyone. I begged and begged them probably every five minutes, please take me back to the room, please take me back to the room because the ICU is horrendous. I'm on my own. Whether they'd even let someone visit me, I don't know if I wasn't on my own, but then I wasn't even on my phone. However, we were talking using the nurse's phones on the translator app. So I'm hearing their WhatsApp tones ping constantly while I'm looking at the ceiling thinking, please just let me watch a film on my phone. That's all I wanted, just to pass the time while I'm going to sit there really uncomfortable, really irritated, because I can imagine they probably shot me with adrenaline because I was going to die. <laughs> well, I look a dick, but the surge has been in. And he wants to go home quite clearly. I'm saying, can you do this, can you do this? Well, mate, if everyone else spoke a bit better English, I wouldn't be directing you. <laughs> but just a drink. Like, oh my God. Just sat here having a bit of water. I'm just like, eat. Oh, fuck. So obviously, the, the tube going down your throat causes issues, but it's just it's so dry afterwards as well. Yeah, so that is amazing. <laughs> food bags over there. Bring me the food bag. <laughs> so when one of the nurse comes off to sort bags, I think I've got everything out of this one. But all the food's over there. I have these glasses. Um, and I've got my headphones and that. I've now set up the table here inside with my tablet, my laptop. So I feel fine. Like in the other room, it's literally standing there watching the clock. Just wanting to get out of that bed. 
wanted to stand up and walk, wanted to move, and it was so much more noticeable that I was lying still because I was just literally lying watching the clock, the, the, the minutes tick by. I'm like half asleep, not sleeping properly. If I could have just dozed off, I would have been fine. I, I'm literally just watching the minutes by minutes, and it's way worse. It's just mental torture. Come back to this room, it's not as bad. And then I'll, um, then I'll put a film on now and try and pass some time. In this next clip, you're going to see me take some peptides. So we've got TB500 and BPC157, which are healing peptides. There's a lot of data to show the fact they are going to significantly improve the healing process. I took them last time, I've given them to multiple people at different operations, and they aid you in every single aspect. They are very, very important to be used IV because they work in a different way. So there's only a very limited time when there's an IV line in post-operation that you could do this. You can still use them intramuscular afterwards, but then the IV line is not going to be in. So it's not going to be as effective. It's still going to be very effective, but not as effective. So it's a very good time to utilize them. Modern medicine doesn't quite do this yet. It's something that I think will come in in the future because it quite clearly does have a positive effect. I also use some vitamins. So I had vitamin C and multivitamins bought from the pharmacy, along with growth hormone I'd also bought. All of those will work in a different way if they take intravenously instead of intermuscle or subcutaneously, which is all into the body fat. So in the next clip, you're about to see me do something that I wouldn't advise people to do at home. If you have someone who knows what they're doing to do it for you, yes, they are very effective. It will make a difference. However, if you're in a hospital, and you do them doctors and nurses, they will probably go mental if you attempt to do this stuff. That's not got caught doing this. <laughs> That's not one. Shit. He gets all vitamins, which I'm going to put in a TV500 and a VPC to speed up the recovery process. Because as we know, most places don't do that, which means you're not fully aiding the recovery process. So, do what I can to speed up. I mean, this would be easy just to ask their help, but I don't know their reaction to this. It's probably not going to be positive. So, I've told myself, obviously, if I had someone here, they could just do this, and it's, it's a very easy job to do. Um, a little bit annoying. But it's just to go this in. Full bottle of TB500, full bottle of BPC, should significantly speed up the recovery. That's the aim anyway, I feel very nervous doing it because they can walk in at any point. So I'm getting some cognition back now, and it's 10, 10 past 10 at night time, so it's a little bit of water. Um, but I need to get this lights turned off, get the air on turned on, hopefully I'll be able to sleep. Throat feels a little better because I'm having water. I don't want to do too much because obviously I've not, still got a catheter in, and if I didn't, I, it, I don't want to drink an excessive amount because it means getting up going to the toilet. Um, and realistically, like, it's the getting up, getting down that's the issue, as most people will experience. Getting out of bed is quite hard. This seems a lot easier than last time though because I can actually sit up, but it's still tight, so you're like unsure. Like, okay, is that is that right to move? And almost don't really want to move at first, just in case. So, yeah, but it's about time I'll do another shot through the TV500 BPC as well, which I'm getting better at. Right in the back of the hand there, and slowly. And that's it. Done, finished. Um, if I had a fridge, I was going to do some growth as well, but it's not refrigerated. It's, it's the fact that I want to do the growth hormone in pulses throughout the, the entire time right here. Um, whereas it would be obviously amazing to have this in, do all these in a pulse style fashion through the next what, 24 hours of that's in, and do a lower dose pulsed. But because I've not got a fridge and that's mixed already and could degrade. In, especially in this warm room, I don't want it to start degrading and then it doesn't work. 
So that's what we're going to do, the full vial of each. So hopefully we're giving me a much better recovery. We don't know, we can't quantify that how much better it will be, but if it helps, I'll be back on my feet faster. So it's addressing the, the wound healing and the inflammation. And that's what we're trying to do, obviously, as much as we can. I've got my supplements as well. So there's some anti-inflammatory supplements, which I'm also using in the setting of joint care, but when it's used to reduce inflammation, it's still gonna help. So I've got those, and obviously my normal nighttime supplements, like magnesium, zinc, etc. It's the middle of the night, but for some reason, I'm getting up. I'm just gonna try and get me up. I don't need to be getting up. To know how to get up. Yeah, I'm gonna be getting up. I want to go down. No, three. Is the air conditioning on? On that because I feel quite warm. Climatic. Which translation app are you using to speak? Because it seems better than this one. Mama. Translator. Okay. Okay, so on the plus side, <laughs> tummy tuck's well worse. Holy shit. Tummy tuck's well worse. It's not that bad. Uh, it, it feels like it will be, and I went to move, and I was like, I can't, I can't actually move straight away. Um, the translator app she's got is called Translator. Uh, it's well better than Google Google Translate, so it's a lot more user friendly. So that when she's been coming in, it's the easiest to communicate with her out of everyone so far. I'm just using the app. So obviously, if I've got the app, she's got the app. Sound. Um, I'm on Wi Fi here anyway, so easy. But um, that was that was easy. with what's on the ward. No pain walking at all, which means I can, I can move. Well, I couldn't move last time. 
if you flick back the video too, <laughs> when I got out of the hospital, I was like, can't move, can't move, I'm in so much pain. Not that, not that at all. So where I was like, uh, feeling like I've been hit by a bus last time. This, you can tell you that stuff done, but to be honest, it doesn't feel much different to having lipo on the back of my body when I had lipo last time. So I can't actually get up and go over there if I want to. The, the biggest problem right now is the fact we've got drainage tubes in the back um, and I've still got a catheter in, which is minion. So the reason I, I want, I, well, the reason I wanted to put them down my shorts is because I'm going in a straight line, not bending back up. Oh, oh, it's like turning your back out of the shorts, it's really uncomfortable. So if you can get some loose fitting shorts and just put them going down, you can sit a lot more comfortable. Um, but obviously, catheter will be out in the morning, drainage tubes will be out, <laughs> hopefully in a couple of days, I don't know. Uh, hopefully I don't have to wait for the doctor to come back because I've been mainly walking around them all week. What am I going to do with them? Put them in my, in my bum bag. <laughs> but we're actually heading in a pretty good direction, so that's not that bad. Um, considering how big they've gone, obviously if you've just done a little snippet, which is what we originally thought, wasn't that bad. But because it's gone right round, it's a big chunk. Um, it's a lot more severe than, than we originally planned. Scars come up further around than everything else. But I'm lying on the scars right now. So, like, you couldn't do it last time. So yes, the skin's tighter, not as tight as the front was. It wasn't, it wasn't pulled that far. With all the internal stitches, all that stuff that was awful is not there this time. So I was, when he initially did it, I thought this is going to be really bad. And it's not actually as bad as the last one. Even though it is not just a revision, it's like a, another major surgery on its own. And the fully anaesthetic up by the looks of it. And <laughs> potentially killed me there. Thanks, pal. As much anyway, I'm going to take the damage. Um, so I've just spent... <laughs> half an hour injecting vitamin C into the bag because vitamin C is going to be massive in terms of healing especially the, the skin repairing back together I, I don't know why hospitals don't put it in very often um, it really should be but obviously we're trying to get this back together so it won't rupture but then I'll be in a much better position I'll be uncomfortable but if it's, if it's secured as in like the skin is secured and, f and fixed to a degree where it's not going to tear when you bend over then that's the place we're trying to get to as fast as possible because this doesn't seem that bad, but on the ward it wasn't that bad. So it's been fast around in this. I may well check the damage while I'm in. <laughs> also, pro tip put the drainage tubes down. Your, oh shit, it's on the floor. Put the drainage tubes down your um, pants so they're not curled back upon themselves. Hopefully, oh, see how big the incision is. I can't just see it until I'll back all this video in a sec. But hey, sick! That's your fucking tight midsection, though. Uh, so although that's going to get more inflamed, it's looking like it's actually been successful. But I don't know how far that comes forward because it feels like it feels like he's come all the way to here with the incision, which is quite far. I didn't really want it to be that far. I, mean, I, suppose, I suppose it'll follow my obliques, so it'll look okay. But it's just like locked up here. Just touching it, it's like rock solid. I mean, yes, it's going to be more solid than it was yesterday, due to the fact that now there's the extra skin and, and, and body fat being removed. But it's definitely, and then the back is just like, oh, well, like, well swollen. Unbelievably swollen. So I can tell the movement. So I've got a bit extra careful of the movement. Got a nice bruise there, Jesus fucking Christ. <laughs> Why is that bruise so high up? Well, anyway, there we go. 4 40 am. Still going to sleep. Is this the food I've been given? <laughs> It's actually laughable, it's easy to rub on me. Because, a tiny cup of water, it's the only water I've been given the whole time I've been here. One fucking hard boiled egg, some tomatoes, cheese, lactose intolerance, fucking eight grapes. No, is it, is it a grape? Or is it olives? Oh, sorry, eight olives. 
Then two lots of bread. Well done, mate. <laughs> it's good you have planned ahead and brought some proper food. Because this is going to do fuck off my recovery. But the growth hormone of vitamin C in that bag will be doing. Now, I should intentionally choose a flatter angle, but I'm not going to. My body's just looking worse and worse anyway, so it makes no difference. Um, it seems to happen with operations because one of my clients just had a gyno operation. And he was saying, like, I just feel like I've gone backwards, my whole body's inflamed. It's like, it seems to. It just gets filled with water retention. Uh, I just look awful, feel awful. Surgeon's just been in. Uh, I was having a nice snooze as well, the bastard. My sleep's been like intermittent. Uh, I said to him, Can you give me a sedative to go back to the hotel where so I can just like sleep? And try and sleep off this first couple of days, I feel pretty sound. Uh, last time, <laughs> when they came to get me out of the bed, I was literally clinked because I'm not this on video because Amy was already back in the room. Um, and I was clinging to the bed, I was like, No, I feel safe because I was so fucking vulnerable. Body was so beat up, I was like, I don't want to leave this bed. This time, obviously, I am a little bit more aware of what's going on, but it's nowhere near as severe. So he, like he just said to me, it's more that you don't realise you've had an operation or you forget and you lean over. So it's like, you know, for, for two months, you have to be careful bending over. And I'm like, uh, mate, I, I'm a personal trainer. <laughs> uh, I pick things up all the time from the floor. Fortunately, though, which is actually a point to, to really make, when I've been leaning over, I've been going dead slow, but then most of the movement comes from my hamstrings so I can get to the floor without excessively bending my back whereas most people as I know from my job struggle because their hamstrings don't have flexibility so they're really stiff when they try and go over and it's all in their back and it will then put this under more stress because this particular area will be getting stretched more for me I can go quite low before that area even gets affected at all so if I'm going slowly especially for the first couple of weeks I can realise that it, it, it's actually all right. Um, morning supplements is the biggest load of morning supplements I've ever had because it has loads of other stuff in. Hell of a lot of stuff to help bring down the inflammation. Um, plus all my normal morning supplements. So get those in now. Um, and I've decided with, with food wise, I'm not going to start to plow in food. So like, I'll be inactive and I'll get fat fast. So. That's also something to worry about. My appetite's so high, uh, but my expenditure is now going to be so low. Uh, I'm just going to try and eat to maintain hunger than just eat anyway. And keep these glasses on most of the time. The reason I've got these glasses in look shit is because they're broken in the middle, so they've got some tape there. <laughs> but if you remember, I had them on last time. I always have them on if I'm trying to do stuff like this, where I'm like, I'm taking a break for a day. Do it all. And all, like, all the curtains are closed. I'll just keep these on. The lighting's a little bit less harsh, so it's a little bit easier to relax if you're trying to relax. So that's why I look a knob, and the hair's a mess. But at this point, you stop caring, so don't worry about it.
probably worse because I'm sat in this position instead of lying down. Probably would have been easier to lie down. So she's going for a walk around. She's going to just walk and wanted to move before I leave this hotel. hotel. Yeah. So she's going to walk around before I leave the hospital. Walk around the ward. Actually walk. Not the last time I can move. But now I can walk at a semi-decent pace. So this is a lot easier. But we have got two of my old friends with back. So lying on the flat of my back is uncomfortable. Like I said, it's just swelling, my whole body's just like swelled. You don't see much of weight. Yeah, my body's definitely swelled. <laughs> I've got five kilos. So people are panicking, thinking, oh my god, it's happened to my body. Like, it's swollen everywhere. Yeah, puffs up everywhere. And that'll just take a while to come down. Your body has to settle that down, like your heart rate might fluctuate, mine keeps kind of going up into the 70s. Body temperature keeps going up and down, she's dead normal. It's just, you just traumatise yourself <laughs> in, a, in a really extreme way. So, that's just, but then walking is one of the easiest things to bring back to my mother. Just walking, moving as much as you can, within reason. Coming back after walking around what, on the, the ward four times, these. I've got a noticeable amount more uh, like liquid, we'll call it liquid, in <laughs> um, and I need a wee so everything's just got moving again so when it's lying here nothing's draining out so it's draining a lot faster when you have to start moving out which is why they tell you to walk if you sit there feeling sorry for yourself although it, that is what you naturally want to do you're not going to heal very fast but I feel very heavy, my body's inflamed Everywhere, that's why my breathing's heavier. So I've not eaten anything to set allergies off, it's just that you've just I've had a reaction to something. But I think it actually there's something wrong with it. I yesterday that it might be an allergy that I didn't know I had because when I gave him that, I could not breathe. It's like in there, so obviously when they took the tube out, I'm going, <sighs> I can't breathe. Like I sometimes do, my allergies are all flared up. So something to note. But I feel different now, I've just started moving because I've been lying there for 24 hours. Like not moving at all, just moving around, actually walking just really, really helps my body feel a bit better already. But it means I can go out, um, obviously in the daytime, not too far, but go out, go out of the hotel, my, my, I'll mentally feel better, but physically we'll, we'll heal a lot more by doing that. Um, I can do that from day one, which is a lot better than last time. Holy shit, I ain't something to feel better. That other room is killing me. This room. This room is a pretty fucking nice room. This I can see myself staying in for a few more hours and not losing my mind. So when it comes to stuff like this, you definitely need to get a nice room that is nice to walk into. Not like a bloody travel lodge that you stay in on a Saturday night if you're going partying somewhere. Right, it's at least it lifted up a sigh of relief when I walked in it. It's just like, oh, that's a pretty nice room. <sighs> it took a lot of pressure off. A hell of a lot of pressure off. <laughs>